This man is the most. Oof. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, 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 everyone. <laughs> hello, everyone. We find each other again today for an exceptional live. It's been a few weeks that I've been working on it internally. A live on, in which we'll present you the event of the 20 years. Not in its entirety, but we will keep some secrets a little bit hidden. But around this table, who do we have already? On my left, we have uh, Rebek. I work in Dofus as a project chief. You see me every now and then uh, in the lives. I'm here for the 20 year event. Sorry, I did not start with women. Sorry, Naomi. It's unforgivable. Well, I am a game designer in Dofus. That's it. Emerit. Emeritus. So. And for me, I'm Papino, producer. You already know him. Dofus 2.0 and Retro. We wanted, first of all, to do a very little point on the server situation because we know that they are still down. It's, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> The maintenance of this morning did not go well, not as expected at least. We had a lot of uh, unexpected things. So during the smoke test, the back did not work. I don't know what the back is. We didn't have any offer. We tried to correct, we couldn't correct it by midday. Yes, it is. So the first attempt to open has, has showed that it was problematic. On many servers, four out of the seven actually open right now. We had problem on the character creation page. I don't want to get into too much detail, but we have an appli that allows us to create pseudos and then test where those those pseudos have been used or they allowed. That plugin cannot communicate with the servers, and we don't know why. There's a lot of latency, which means right now we have three servers that are open. Uh, Shadow, Imagero, and Draconeros, if I don't say anything stupid. On these servers, when you log in, you won't see your characters on the opening. But when you get into the server, you will see them listed. Don't worry about it. They're not lost. They're there. For the other servers, we're still working on it to try and open them as soon as possible. We're not trying to think about rollbacks or anything. No, 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 no. We're working on fixing this problem as quickly as possible. There is no story of loss of data and stuff like that. It's a mere access problem. It's just a schematic, internal schematic problem. It's mapping and routing of data in order for this plugin to communicate with this one. So we're still trying to work on it to reopen servers for you as soon as possible. When it comes to compensation, we'll come back to you as soon as possible. But in the day, because we have, you have essentially lost a day during the maintenance, you will have at least a day's uh, credited, get, uh, sub day gifted. We will talk about compensation later. We're already talking about the uh, thingy, divine thingy event in the chat. Cal calm down, I'm not promising anything, but <laughs> don't get too excited, but we'll see what comes out. As a game developer, it's really hard when you're doing so many events, but you're having problems like this. G good luck to you. So essentially, what we want is to see later on, we will communicate to you on compensation, because right now, we are live. One last, very, one very last quick word from Rebek. I had something else to say, one last thing to say about the current situation. Now, in the current state of things... Uh, the, cur the current state of information that we have, the scenario that looks like it could be the real one if we can't find what the source of the problem before the end of the day which is the characters will be uh the, the the servers will reopen but without the possibility of creating new characters because that doesn't stop this you cannot necessarily create characters but still have servers open that doesn't stop them reopening but it will just be a longer problem that we'll try and fix over over the next day or two Aside from that, we'd really like to solve it before the end of the day, before reopening. But for now, we don't have the information to give you as it stands. In any case, let's just translate to the beautiful event that we have been preparing for you. Yeah, it was not predicted to talk about the servers. <laughs> we were planning to only be festive, but the reality is we had some unexpected stuff. So we're talking about that. Now we're going to open the floor.
to festivities. It's no stranger to you all that Dofus is celebrating his 20th year. 20 years? It's not something that we calculate in the beginning. Did we ever expect it to reach 20 years? It's true that back in the day, uh, we did not expect that it would be just Dofus. We expected that no MMO would survive. What was Rivek 20 years ago doing? Was he running in uh, at school? <laughs> at the time, at the minute, I didn't even have a, co a computer. So I didn't even know that Dofus one was released. As a true Frenchman. <laughs> I lived in the very deep... Um, uh, Outside of the city, so I everything like that passed me by and we weren't aware of the existence of all these things. And the Minitel, not a PC, so no idea. What about you? About about similar in the south, outside of the city. And we played with friends and playing around trees and shit like that. I didn't play from the start, neither. My first character I've created in Silvos. Just a little bit later, yeah. Same for me. My first server was Gultar, which was incredible. I see. No, no, no. <laughs> the IT department have removed everyone in the chat that mentioned Gultar. Oh, no. But for those of you who remember the servers back in the day, it was quite something. What was the first class you picked then? An anecdote that a lot of people have heard it from me. I started Sakri because it was the class that I cared a lot about at the time. Except that from my I've I've leveled it strength because I was stupid at the time. Five for one in strength, which was one point every level by the level to thirty. <laughs> I was asked to start I spent four weeks leveling to level 30 and now you're asking me to restart. Oh my god. Um, I'm tired of hitting crack cracklers or the or the hidden uh, Schaefer map that was in Astro. I remember that. It was cool. It's a different knowledge of the game back in the day. We've all made this mistake back in the day. Yeah, yeah. And ever since it has evolved quite a lot, hasn't it? Even in comparison to retro and we can't, we can't easily compare the two of them between the old version and the current retro. It's just two games apart. If you look at 129, 2004, 2005, the very early version of the game, there's so many things added, lots of evolution since then, and I know. So we have a little pre presentation that we've prepared, and then we'll have the opportunity to talk about it again later on. So without further ado, let's talk about the, the event that is happening in the game, in Dofus. <laughs> the dream of a true. Where are we? Why is Draconiris in there? He wasn't there in the lot, but in the first time, but why is he there now? Right, let's go. As we talked about it, this event, during the cross mono, this event, was going to be an update of the event that has happened in 2019 for the 15th year celebration. For the 15th years, what have we done? For those who weren't able to participate, we have done a little recap for you to explain what exactly we have has happened. And so we're talking about the same thing. Back in the day, what have we done? We needed to prepare the birthday or anniversary of the King Alistair's buffet, the buffet. So over 29 days, what we've done, we had a big problem in the Amakna castle, which is that the candles have disappeared. So the guy who was meant to turn the lights on was asleep. So, so we needed your help as players to find these candles and reignite them so we can celebrate the anniversary or birthday of the favorite um, the favorite uh, pet of the king. So he really likes the buffets. This is his favorite pet, that's what he likes. How did it present itself? Essentially we had Dra Draconeros had opened a door towards the dream of this guy who was going to pick up the candles, who allowed you guys to jump in this dream and allowed you players to go to this upside down world which was a copy of the Ankama world our offices 
uh, our daily life at work. So you do you dove straight in into our world in our daily life, and it didn't change much because the visuals are still up to date. Yeah. They're still up to date. This is exactly what our offices still do look like. So not much has changed. <laughs> Just good. So the teams have moved. They've been rearranged around the building and stuff like that. But the offices still look the same. Oh, we don't have the same chairs anymore. Eh? See, she's being pedantic. <laughs> In essence, the duration of it was 29 days. It lasted a little, a little shy of a month. We had an alternance between two. So we had... Two quests, a big one, individual uh, tasks, and another set of quests that were group-based. So you had threshold to reach. So what we've done is one week for every step of the four steps of the whole progression so that you can make progress slowly but have something to work towards during the week for those of you who are busy. And some of you guys, some servers have smashed them out of the park. I wanted to remind you that some servers were much faster than the others and community events, there were data shared between community just to see a little competition between the two, between the most servers to see which ones were further ahead of the others and which ones weren't. So this was one for the recap of the 15 years. What happened at the end of it? So towards the end, all the steps of the quest brought you to a final uh, step. A, an enigma, a four-step enigma that you needed to solve uh, in order to be able to open the office that we call here the penthouse, which is Tot and Cam's Oop. Pent, so yes, yeah, so that you could open and get a certain drop. When you fight them and win, you get the last candle, and then you can go back to the Amakna, to the King's Alistair's can, uh, castle, light light the um, cake and then the feast started it remained a marking event that we wish to conserve in the, in the current one it is one of the finalities of this event so we didn't have the occasion to do the fight against Tot and Cam who are the two found founders at the 15 year event so now is the occasion you can still meet them in this event and there were many 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 rewards so I, I couldn't fit them all in one slate, but there were so many rewards, so many of them. So you either unlock them during the quest. The general reward at the end of the every step is an animated ornament and a haven bag with an Ankama theme. And then there was a shop right next to the anchor bar, right next to some guy, some NPC that lets you get into the dream. You could buy titles, you could buy a um, a Levy hat, and the head of uh, th this one, the first one with the horns, I don't know what the name of it is. There were many consumables to change your appearance. There were attitudes that you could get. In Tot and Cam during the fight, there was also a special drop, a the brick shield that you can see there. There. There are so many rewards that were distributed during this event that have never been distributed ever since. They were exclusive to back five years ago and have disappeared completely. And now we think this is the occasion and opportunity to bring them back. <laughs> many people in the forums have asked for this and we have obliged. They weren't present last year and now we think it's special enough to bring. And this is why we will... Uh, enlarge the event over time so more people can get a chance to get these rewards fabulous transition i just i was just going to talk about the novelties the new stuff right yeah we talked about the duration and the progress but hold on no stop stop spoiling stop spoiling let's go back to the transition <laughs> now we go back on the re-thematizations we brought the theme of this one so this year five years ago not last year so for the 15 years anniversary Today, we wanted to re-thematize a new area, and the current one will be the True Fair. So, the first one, the first event, the Mufet one, the 15 year, was in October. It's just that its birthday was the on in October, and the event, we're not doing it in October, we're doing it this summer, from July to September. 
It was the first slide. It's fine. It's fine. I thought I was spoiled. Uh, it starts next week. Next Tuesday, after the maintenance, it will update. Until the 17th of September. I think that's where Vokelia ends as well. Okay. So it can't be the birthday of the buffet. So, but we also thought of redoing the entire Trule Fair. And you can see in the image there. We've said this during the Crossman note. And what we can see is we've used this theme to redo the birthday of now we're going to Leonzi Trull's dream not to celebrate a birthday but rather to celebrate the Trull Fair because they intend they intend to renovate it and they need courage from you in order to revamp it and make it new and to imagine what it could be revamped as so everything has been rethematized in this narrative right here. so there's a big link between the event that you will do in the 20 years and the finality that you will discover after the update when it's released. There's a so big of a link so that to the point when the event has ended, you shouldn't complain about some things that will happen in the true fair. Some voices were heard. We've heard all of your uh, <laughs> feedback. <laughs> so don't complain about it. Right, we want to hear some things about what you think about this event before we release it, so that when we release it, no complaints. Which is big for the update that is coming after the event is, is finished. So we want you to give... Uh, the, the theme, the central theme is you giving hope back to Leon Zitrul about the revamp. So you have five missions to do. We started on 15 missions for the 15 year. Now... We're going back on that. The individuals will be, some of them will be individuals, some of them will be community based. So the first one is find the Pecky Pecky. If they found the first one, which is Pecky Pecky, we didn't want to reveal everything on the five uh, missions. So we've put a little teasers, little indices for you to sort of get a taste. But the goal is not to tell you everything right now. And we will try and avoid uh, revealing everything. They've also found Dreams. Oh, Dreams is this one. Oh, it's so cool. And yes, there's Volcano as well. You found three out of five. Holy smokes, you guys are quick. We're not going to get into details of every mission right here, right now, because it would be spoiling. And it's the principal novelty of the event. For those of you who have already done it, we'll let you discover some surprises. But also, even if there are some of you that have op already opened Vilconia, for those of you that are slow, it could be an idea to think about that. It could help you to think about that in those sense. The Pecky Pecky. You're very likely to encounter him in a completely new, unprecedented format and version. We've already also used some new feature that did not exist five years ago, like Dream, Infinite Dreams. There will be a part inside of the world Dreams. And then, you haven't found the last one. I did, I did mention that there was a link. Uh, it, the link of the True Fair. So it's not too hard to find the link with it and the missing link, which is up here. We don't necessarily need to tell you anymore. See, I knew I was going to spoil everything. Right, let's go to the reward trade. I saw that on the on the chat, people are reacting too much. So, the first thing that you need to know is all the rewards that you could have won in the previous edition, you'll be able to win in this edition. And that, so, so, if you won the event already in the past, you won't have uh, the, the same Haven Bank. But those of you who missed it from last year will get the new ones and the old ones. So everything that we've mentioned before, you'll be able to get if you haven't. And some new things. So 20 years, what do they represent? 20 years of the Crossmoss means we have, for the anecdote, we have had this set in the game files and we've never released it. At least three years and have been keeping it close. We wanted to bring it for the expedition, but we just, no, we've been holding on to it. But we thought there's no better time than now to release it for this big celebration. Knowing very well that we've not we've never showed it in the slides, but I think the pet has an idol, has an I I don't know what that means, because it is 
a set that we've really put a lot of work into. Uh, and it's animated, so when it's idle, it will be doing things. That is really cool. And we've designed it also for the upcoming uh, Unity. So we've designed it with that in mind. So the set is incredible, if I say so myself. It will be fantastic, and you will discover that. And there will be new titles, of course, because that's the cake slice. It will only be during the birthday. So the birthday, the word anniversary uh, birthday has been said since the convention, the 30th of August until the 17th of September. That's what we mean by the birthday. So for the entire month, you will be able to eat a slice of the cake at the cafeteria and maybe something else we will see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> maybe there will be other surprise at that moment. We will invite you, certainly, to come and we will communicate it to you and you'll be able to join us there. And the echo flips uh, clause, what is that? It's a little benediction that we've added, it, a little boost for um, drops and XP that you will get to pick. We also have some uh, other evolutions. Uh, so there's an enigma at the end of the, tw the 15th year. The idea was to find a response to the enigma. If you didn't, it would be too sad if you didn't. So we had to update it, but also the quests. So those of you who did the previous edition, we want them to also be surprised when they do this. So what we've done, the first thing is the five year content that we've added, we've added it to this current one. So like the Wabbit where you have to do dungeons, we've added the new dungeons we've recently included in the game. We've also moved some NPCs to new areas. So, so similarly, we had to do a little work and investigation work to find these NPCs. And so the Enigma, the whole idea of the Enigma has been rethought. So the old one to make, so if you know the answers to the previous one, it won't help you this year. <laughs> and in the meantime, there were a redoing of Bonta and Brackmar. So things have changed. So necessarily the answers and questions will change as well. Uh, the goblins, we had 15. Now there are 20. So we haven't changed everything, but a lot of things have remained the same. But where we could bring some new novelty little changes so you can be surprised if you've done it in the previous edition we've not held back you know the duration will be more uh prolonged over time the previous one was 29 days this one will be two months because this allows us to coincide it with the 17th september which was the update 273 we wanted to coincide those two and it allows us more time to celebrate with you and for you to do more of the game because two three weeks can be tight if you're on vacation or something like that you've just missed it but we preferred to enlarge it over two months so you can do the event whenever you want and profit from all the facets of it whenever you have time and it does this it, the fact that it's two months does not make it easy for everyone it still requires time and dedication but it, at the same time allows you the time so you don't have to take days off for two weeks and put a lot of effort in just so you can do it within that small period and there's some things uh, that we have revised upwards we have raised some things but not everything oh some thresholds for difficulties and stuff like that that have been increased so essentially for next tuesday the activation will happen after the server activation during the uh, maintenance i want to answer this question in chat no, 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 you have to be level 20 in order to start. All the levels inside will be multi-level. They adapt to your level. All the quests that ask you to do specific things will also be adapted. So level tranches. If you're level 50, you can do from beginning to end the entire event and not miss a single thing. And to finish, we have a little surprise that we've mentioned on Monday. From the 30th of August to the 16th of September, it will be at the cafeteria. If you find, if you find the set stylish, you will find something else that is really stylish in the cafeteria. <laughs> and that's it. And this was to do a little cover up of the entire 20 year event uh, about the upside down world. I also wanted during this live to do a recap about all the various events, little actions that we've started to communicate to you uh, 
uh, for the 20 year festivity. So there are some that have already started. The dungeon monster that has started last week. Uh, every month a dungeon for the next six months until December. You get one really cool looking shield on six specific bosses. Um, to do with the six first mangas that we've re released. So for those that have understood it. It was... We've announced it. You will get one every month during the second half of the year until September. Yeah, so the first six monsters that we've released as part of Mangas, you will see. So we've redone the shields. We've made a special shield for the occasion. We didn't just recycle the previous ones from old versions. And it's called it a collector version. <laughs> it's a collector version. It's a wordplay. And we wanted to give a little wink to the identity of the special nature of the 20 year. That is called the transmedia. You might not have read it. But it will give you a piece of lore about some monsters or some stories that you might not know. So now there's one every month that is activated for a few days for a week. And the last one will be the worker in December. There is a news on the topic, which will be available on the website. If you want to get more details about this, go and check it out. Next, there will be tournaments, PvP in August, PvM in October. There was a big tournament that was done of the 10 years back in the day, a PvP one. Now there will be a 20 year tournament, not one, but two. We're catering to PvP and PvM PV people. Just like the 10 year, there will be a PvP one, but we will also have thought later on during the year, we've added a next one for the PvM for everyone that wishes to partake or not necessarily interested by uh, PvP. You will mark your name in history with this tournament. So similarly, you won't necessarily need to have a full Opti character on your server, on the classical server in order to have. We will offer everything that you require in order to participate. So for, I will say, I will spoil this far in advance, for part of the PVM tournament will not be done on the beta Unity server at all. Just, we wanted to rule it out. These are things that we're trying to put in place. Uh, so we're trying to do specific things that are designed for this tournament. But here again, it's a work that we keep adding to ourselves, sadly, yeah, yeah. And the KTA as well that is working really hard with us to provide good quality content. So we will give you two content. We've added PVM, which we don't usually do. But we've realized that the largest far part of uh, our community is PVM oriented. And we want to do that something for them. To get to, to level 1500 in, in Dreams is funny and cool. But to be the winner of a PVM tournament is another level of cool. And we've seen some things that passed on. It's uh, rewards. Rewards. If, if things that have happened in a better server, what, how do we get them? Yeah, you will be able to port them onto your classical servers if you make any sort of reward. And the next thing on the list is the convention. There is a news that was published yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, 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 yesterday. Which continued to give you a bit more information about the convention. Uh, namely the place it will be at home as we said it's just outside of uh, the locals outside of the building yeah outside uh, in Roubaix on th for three days 30 31st and the 1st of September there will be the uh, tickets will be free but you will have still to get them nominative tickets so you can put your name on it online so we know how many participants because we have a maximum capacity of people that we can receive. So we need to know how many of you will be coming and react accordingly. It's not the same as 300 people are coming versus 9,000. So that's why we have, all, although it is free, we will still go to have tickets. It's not, it's not yet accessible for those of you asking the question. <laughs> Don't even try and find it. Once they are accessible, you will easily be able to spot the information. 30, 31st, August, and the 1st of September. He needed to specify that. So three consecutive days. And now... Whoa, 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 whoa. I've given everything already. Holy shit. You've not seen anything. Spoilers. <laughs> Everyone calm down. <laughs> oh, sorry. We didn't specify exactly what it is. 
that you will be doing in this convention what is the offering we can't give you everything but know that there will be pcs to test unity at a minimum a small detail for dofus you will have 108 pcs available to try unity which is insane what unity will be available and potentially a little surprise if we manage to get it ready by then a little exclusive content for this convention but we cannot give you too many details sadly because there's still things left to be decided it's a big event it doesn't touch just Ankama it's something that we're doing for um, various cities the mayor it's the whole town that will sort of quote unquote privatize it's massive so we're trying not to spoil i can tell you that there will be 108 pcs with exclusive content for those of us but i will not tell you anymore but also we don't want to make any commitments for other games in theory we'll be able to try other ankama games and maybe for those of you who remember we are trying to do the uh what the uh, dusty uh, closets for Wakfu and stuff like that, and also some retro gaming in Akama to play our old productions that some of you will remember. But we're, we're unearthing some things, but I'm not gonna give you any more than that. <laughs> yeah, so we'll just give you the opportunity to replay some things in the past. Yeah, cross my god, he's everybody calm down. I'm seeing people talk about chat. Will my game will be there? Will my game be there? <laughs> but we will give you everything. There will be some cool things. So now I can go to the next slide. In September, we will also have some gifts to distribute every day in September. It's true that the... Oh, the... Uh, what are they called? The uh, event calendar, the one that you place for December to eat the chocolates. Advent calendar. So every day for, for September, we will do something like the advent calendar where you have every day there will be a gift on the shop that you will be able to pick up. I can't tell you exactly everything that will be there, but essentially we will. I can't tell you with great definition what it is that will be in every day right now. So we still have some things to confirm, some things to smooth out the details, but in every day of September, you will get a gift. Well, if, if you just want uh, the explosives every day that we can make that happen, it's easy, it doesn't require too much work. But, <laughs> yes, we don't want to give you cosmetics either. Every day would be too much. 30 extra cosmetics per event would be too much. <laughs> yeah. There will be some fireworks, but, well, what can I say? There will be some super gifts here in September as well. Don't hesitate to come and... Uh... Yeah. Just like the convention, you'd be remiss if you didn't intend and get your gifts. Next thing is the true fair. Here again, we don't want to get too much into the de details, but you need to know that for the 273 update, to celebrate in a dignified manner this festivities, this there is no better place than the true fair. To remind those of you who missed the information last time, We've said it here and there during the cross notes for the 273 update will be 100% axed on the true fair. It won't be possible to do the um, questing for the true fair. There might be some spoils. Here again, we have worked the scenario link between the event and the true fair. Enjoy it. It's it's remarkable. You will, you will enjoy it. There is one quest where the dialogue choices where the community the most selected dialogue direction will be the one that we will take into consideration for the lore later on and the revamp of the true fair so you will have control over what happens during the update so the 2.73 update it will be announced at the end of the Colosseum. we're trying to make it coincide with the 20 year celebration Colosseum and the update and the maintenance so it is for September the 273 and to end the day the year Mr. Unity why don't you tell us about your big baby December Unity will still be released in in December we continue to give you a little updates here and there we did give you a technical dev blog today earlier this morning so you can have more uh, technical details the date is not changing we are still in track for December and I have a surprise for you it's coming further in time from the end of December to the beginning of December so it will be the beautiful sherry on top of this cake 
which is the portal we've been working on for many, many, many years now. And the occasion, the perfect opportunity to rediscover the game with more immersion, more detail, more beauty in the game. If you follow the lives, then you're already aware of what the revamp will look like, what it means for the game. And also, and especially, it's a release of a portal that will be uh, big for people who want to test the big game development revamps that we've made. Just to mention a few. The idols, the revamp of the achievements, the rewards. There will be massive uh, reworks that make it so that the release of early December will be a big, 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 uh, big release as we will rediscover the game. In essence, the last time we've had this feeling was during some of the successful Temporises. It was the last time we had something this big was uh, during COVID with the release of new servers. It's starting to date this release. Many rules and systems, graphical design did not exist. They were either completely non-existent or were deleted by that. So just to say, it will be a beautiful moment. And I remind you that we do have the beta that is coming during uh, August. The date we will release it. Maybe in two days we will tell you the exact date of the beta. But <laughs> in essence, we have beta that is coming in August. And I can only encourage you to go there. It is something that we're really impatient for, especially with the game designers. We want to see during the beta how your first rushes look like, how to do the whole content. It's not about the rush and the content, it's how the servers behave. Um, also, so we can do balancing and other technical stuff that we need to do. Stuff that we will remain very vigilant on to make sure that the release in December is as clean as possible for you when it happens. I finished. <laughs> I finished. <laughs> I finished it. I'll try and find something uh, smart to say after this, but it's going to be really hard. Everything has been said. Don't hesitate to come on the beta and give us your feedback. It's really, really important. And that is why it is quite lengthy. It's from August all the way to December. It is incredibly long. The whole period... We want to hear back from you, we want feedback, we want it to be a conversation to know exactly what needs to be changed. We're thinking about December already. So again, the festive aspect is also present in this better because it's been so long that we've been waiting for it ourselves as much as you. It's the apogee of the 20 years. I think the culmination of all the work and all these celebrities will be Unity release. So from August until September. It will be all festive and we invite you to join us. And for the most impatient of you, we'll have the possibility to try Unity. Know that the Unity client, you can see it Thursday at the Japan Expo. We will have an Akama stand with computers and stuff like that. The game will be loaded on them. You will be, try, you will be able to try an exclusive fight with new functionalities and see yourself what it looks like. Rebek. Will we reincarnate a class in this fight? Oh, we started the spoilers. Well, not really, but let's just say I'm not going to answer from a roleplay uh, point of view. I will, I will uh, answer from a pragmatic point of view. Uh, back in the days, we, we used to reincarnate certain classes for um, some classes that weren't really... Um, as good as others or easy to play as others would try to find balanced ones. Some had the ability or the habit of playing certain classes, some certain spell variations and things like that. It took a while for you to go and get started. Last year we tried. The character incarnates Gultar and then you fight Chushus and all the players had the same spell kit and you could even increase it during fights and it was seamless it was easier for players for beginners for advanced people you could win and for um, uh, the experts they could try hard and ameliorate their scores so we went on this format and we've even pushed it a bit further uh, as you know it's the theme of the necromes which will present during the Japan Expo. So you will incarnate an uh, a, a, an emissary of the god that will be sent to fight. So essence, it's not the 20th. 
No, if if there is a twentieth class to announce, we will not announce it like this during a completely irrelevant uh, live. But for those of you who will be uh, present at the Japan Expo, we are looking forward to exchange with you and talk with you. The fight that we will show you in the Unity client will represent a lot of the things that we want to see succeed in December. Uh, it will be. Uh, prevalent the mechanics the systems behind it will be the ones that we'll use for uh, quest fights uh, dungeons and stuff like that so game design wise there's been a lot of novelties that we didn't expect to have we dreamed of them it would be really cool to have this feature but then when the devs here arrived and unity was at hand they were like it's easy we can just do this but so it will be the opportunity to show you the novelties on fights and stuff like that and i will stop here to not spoil too much but i wanted to remind that there will be a live next monday it will be happening in this channel as well uh, we will show you the fight live for those of you who missed it in the japan expo and during the japan expo there will also be lives not necessarily full days but during the evenings where for um three 45 minutes slots where we will show you the fight the stand from different angles from a game development angle from a uh, production angle essentially that's what it will be uh exchange moments and stuff like that will the game will the fight also be at the convention the 30th but at the con yes it will be there if you come to the convention but we will not say any more than that right and there will be there is a necro pass that you will be able to get with th with stamps that you will be able to get and that can be translated to a shield in game for those of you who make it i think i think it's there i think it's there i, th I didn't spoil anything yeah, yeah. so it's the, similarly you will be able to go to different games wakfu waven as well so you will be able to stamp your necro pass and get cosmetics for all games q and a We've bifurcated a bit on the Japan Expo, but do you have any questions? It's part of everything that there is to say. It will rhythm a big portion of the upcoming week for all the team that you will be able to meet there. Again, it will be a pleasure to exchange directly with you if we come. Is there a beta for Unity? Oh, no, no, only a small one from August until December. <laughs> so, yes, a very long beta phase. There are also there's still some details to smooth over with the team in order to communicate it to you the access methods and things like that. So we will come back to you uh, soon. But yes, there will be a very long beta phase in plan for Unity starting from August until December. Beginning or end of it, more towards the middle. And the worst part is that it's true. It's the reality. It's the truth. A little leak on the Opti multi-accounting system. It's a really complicated subject. We don't have anything interesting to show you, to be honest, because most of the things that we have, we have put in place already, are not conclusive. They're not interesting enough for us to tell you. So we're switching positions about some technical things. We'll have to talk about the uh, game developers and the server folks to see how we can better put that in place for... Uh, the Unity release, but right now we don't have anything conclusive or interesting to show you from our point of view. Now, because I'm seeing there's a lot of talk in the chat about the Unity beta, uh, I'll profit from this moment to say this. Because you will put your hand on the Unity client on the uh, Japan Expo and the convention, we've made a lot of quality of life enhancement during the fights, functionalities like cosmetics that we've talked to you earlier in the devlog. You know you have to know that there's some modifications as well that uh, from a server standpoint that will arrive for the better, that will be highly risked, highly risky. So like lag and stuff like that, you'll be able to reduce your lag um, with a new functionality, which will use the better Unity servers to test those so you can get a feel for it and not have to release it on the day off test it first so these are sensitive topics that we don't want to just release on the day off and that's why we invite you and say this many many times come and test it because they're crucial and sensitive things that we want you to test before the release so the historical promise has always been that in december we release it faultlessly and we said um we have offered new tools to the game developers and stuff like that and server side as well 
from now until the release. For those of you who remember the Osatopia release, the Temporis was really interesting and had minimal lag and bugs. The biggest problem that we have was the charge on the server. So the server was so laggy, it couldn't handle. The server at half capacity would lag more than a classical server at full capacity. So these are things that we never wanted to relive with the Unity release. So we are going to use the better Unity to pass big changes, big tools. And when I mean tools, Opti, he's using the word Opti. Uh, when, I, when I say Opti, I'm talking about multi-thread, uh, mono-thread, multi-thread changes. These are new ways of calculating the charge on a server to see how it handles it. And bot side, we, we have concretely real things that we plan on doing. Just I can't absolutely not give you any detail because I would be giving them leads to uh, adapt and adjust. But because we have a lot of investment client side and server side to do some uh, dev work, on that version we have taken the time to put other things updated new new logics in place to combat botting ah will unity be 274 or we move into the 3.0 standard we're still discussing this it happens a lot it is very likely to be 3.0 or it will be shortly before 3.0 and it will be logical given the size of the porting and the sheer size of thing. We will not talk about retro. I've seen some questions uh, flying by. The 20 year event is specific to Dofus 2. Retro will not be affected. We will have lives soon to talk about the update, which will be centered around Grope, his set and his uh, black spotted Dofus. It's a completely different project, a different life. It's not for this one in particular. What do we have for 273 regarding the true fair? We will probably do a live on the topic given the sheer size of things there are. We don't want to tell you anymore. No spoilers, no nothing. We want to give you all the information at the right time. And the little dev blog, of course, on top of that, that we are preparing to make sure that you get all the novelties in one place and talk about the tools that we are developing and things like that to have real detail details about the new manners we will be employing to work the new tools we will release yeah we don't want to get too tech yeah yeah you've gone very technical <laughs> i've seen some things about the screenshots that you shared today on the dev blog about cosmetics uh namely the mimi simbix that haven't been um presented the um there's a lot of things that haven't been presented the the logic the, the logic interface that links items and um uh, and items and cosmetics, how the Mimi Simbix will work moving forward. There's a lot of information that we weren't able to give you during the last live, but now you have it all on the dev blog, which is also in English. Yeah, so that's the idea of a dev blog, to give you more in-depth detail, and it is much easier to exchange with you in the comment section, where you tell us what you think, and we'll be able to take that into account with the team and then answer. What is the functioning? In regards to the functioning, I answer questions because I haven't seen many about the 20 years, so I'm just picking up questions about the Unity better. I allow myself to do that. <laughs> when it comes to the functioning of the Unity better, we will come back to you about that with all the details. Are we going to start from scratch? Will we be... There will be periods in the beta where we will be able to port the existing character so we can sue, so we can see the whole... Um, so we can spot all the problems, how your quests, how your progression, how your items, how your cosmetics behave in the new uh, server. So we've talked about this in the past and we've done a lot of work about the onboarding, the release of the game. So we need to see what a new server looks like on an actual live real service. And because, you know, recently there has been a lot of uh, additions to content additions, new sets for low levels, cosmetic. We need to see what it looks like on a real server. The last time we had the opportunity to test anything like that was the shadow server, but the, even then they had a bonus of times three. So we know there are, we know there are sets that are outlandish, the level 51 that we've added, and some really OP one that we have had to 
taper down, some agility or like the toe, the uh, combo at level 60. It's a bit an anom a technical anomaly. It doesn't mean we will completely remove them or eliminate them, but we have a reflection to have game design wise in order to see whether it's something that we wish to keep in the game that affects everyone or do we come back and change it. There is a, a work, there is a project that we're working on regarding sets from level uh, 0 to 100. We can't say whether it's, it's going to be just ups and nerfs, but essentially we want all the sets to be more competitive. Uh, think about the Albuera set, to wear Albuera set at level 50 and keep that until level 100, and uh, then change to white and black rat sets, it's not really interesting. Uh, we saw a little question about the name, the game name moving forward. Will it become Dofus Unity? No, 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 no. It's just a term that we use internally to signify that there will be a port in from the game, from the Flash client to the Unity. No, no, no. It will remain Dofus, but this is just an internal way of talking. I saw a question about the 20 year. Will there be a pack market? To my knowledge, there won't be any. What we wanted is to give gifts. To give you as a gift is the one that you have seen, the Crosmos one, the coolest looking one so far. Yeah, I thought it had a different name, but no, yeah. Oh, there will be packs on this side. But it won't be the same way uh, the Estompy 20 years. Stamped 20 year ones, there won't be any. I have seen... Uh, there was some I request that you have made a lot during the update. So I have started a question. If there are any promos to come, you will be the first ones to know about it. So don't worry about it. Is there a new level 200 area? Oh my god, the look she gave him. <laughs> the game is not going to stop growing. There is a time when we will release new content, but I can't say anything. <laughs> even for us we are thirsty to bring new content to you even more than you we're dying to bring stuff to you so new level 200 zones new low level zones level 200 yes for sure the low level ones or the tranches of levels we can't tell you exactly when we're still th thinking about them and putting the stuff required to produce them in place but yes novelty in content pvm or PvP later on, or things that are definitely coming. A Frygost rework for Unity. If you mean in the graphical sense, yes, much like every uh, area, it will be retreated, redone, rechanged. But it will see in terms of content and stuff like that, it will be the same working and mechanics you have to do the dungeons in the succession in order to unlock the next one and, the, and i thought we talked about this you know in one of the lives we had some uh, areas in in our heads that we wanted to completely revamp a bit more gameplay revamp revamp or navigational one at least in as a uh in the short term in our radar automize the top priority and there are also other zones that have been raised the koalak mountain kania Otomai. The navigation is not complicated in the Kroalek. You just don't go there. There's not... There's not... <laughs> you go there once and never again. Because quests don't get you there. But Kanya... <laughs> we want to propose novelty. And we have to tell you this. Whether it's game design or graphical design. All the production teams just want to propose new content for you because it's good for us it keeps us at work it brings our creativity to the table something has happened recently the most big recent updates that we can think of are uh redoing black man bond we bring in the forge lots. so yes we have a production team that is that is chewing its bone it's so wants to bring new stuff because as you can see there hasn't been much and do what 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 we find passionate and why we're working here we're passionate about making new stuff and that's what we wanted to do i saw many caps locks about the uh uh 
infinite dreams it is i have a little anecdote there is in the game design there's a list a big board that we should take a photo and show and share with you this is what we want to bring to you this is what we want to bring this is what we can't do there's so many stuff that we want to bring to dreams but in essence when you remove a line we add to every time we say we can't do this we bring new stuff that we want to bring to you but in our radars we have so many things that we want to bring uh, even though dreams in essence is one of the things that we um want to revamp and that we want to touch as a priority after the uh, revamp of the unity release but let's just say in reality it will come after the unity release and stuff like that i saw a question about the japan expo will the content in the japan expo will it be able to kill a full day <laughs> yeah if you want to try out you you will have to do the queue up many times and try out and stuff like that there will be a new system that will bring all the try others some fun but there's a lot of things to do at the japan expo we don't want you to just spend the entire day at the stand yeah yeah, yeah. essentially if you if you spend half a day at the stand yeah you'll be able to do that very easily between the new mangas the new authors that are there waiting for you you'll s easily spend half an hour there's various games and stuff like that that just offers. But yeah, there's a lot of things, enough at least, to kill three, uh, half a day. And then there's the shop as well, because it's, uh, it's the time of, of the, um, yeah, we, we, we welcome you to the shop to go there. It's fun. There's a lot of new things. A full day, I don't think, I think it's maybe a bit too much, but a half a day, yeah, easily, easily. Half a day with the team, talking with creators, talking about mangas, try Unity, and talk to us for half a day. Easy, easy kill. And uh, there will be a Locus shield to pick up, uh, to pick up from the the uh, convention, and it will be implanted in the game with a very low drop rate. There is a question there: wh whether the program will be different from one day to the other. Um, so there's a commonality between the three days. There will be lives also to cover all of them. They won't be identical day to day, but there will be novelty. In, in general terms, it will be largely similar, but with slight variation. So if there's a day that interests you more than the others, you can just spot by whatever day is most convenient. And also there's Lille, which is a city nearby that you can go and visit. Roubaix is fantastic and marvelous. There's a big swimming pool. <laughs> She's teasing him about, is that, is that all you've got? It's just a bullet. <laughs> the PvP tournament, will it be 4v4? The PvP tournament. Uh, there will be a live that will give you more news about it uh, with a more enlarged format. We can't talk about the rewards right now. They're still working about it. So it's the 20 year, uh, it's the 20 year celebration. So we want something to be at the level, the rewards to be at the level of the 20 or something big. <laughs> answer me right now or I will break answer me about the hero mode or I'll break the egg don't break the egg <laughs> I've already answered about the hero mode but in short we don't have anything conclusive to show you right now we will have to review our formula the um, what we're trying right now from a technical standpoint is not nothing interesting to show you so we have to go back to the drawing board and uh, rethink it will there be um, shout outs in the Japan there will probably um, be artists, artists and authors. I don't have a list for who will be there, but I think Anthony Valento will be there. He's always there. <laughs> Got confirmation. Yes, he'll be there. For M1 and M2 Max, the lead client developer works on an M1 machine. He fires up the client and he works on it all day. Yeah. I can't possibly say that it is more developed for M1 and stuff like that. But yeah, it's true. For the specs, we don't have anything tangible to communicate about the machines. We do tests about using uh, old computers without a graphics card. We try... We're still using some really old machines. Useless ones, shit ones. that don't even have graphic cards, mobile ones. Just to see how it runs it. We're still designing it for... 
machines like that but we also want it to work properly and for you to be able to enhance your experience if you have a battle machine like a proper one but also keeping in mind that we want you to be able to run six eight accounts and stuff like that and not have a big problem but between two and four accounts with the modest machines you should be able to fire up unity on good graphics and not have any problem I saw a question about the convention to know whether you will be able to visit the actual offices. We thought from a logistical standpoint it would be difficult. No, you won't be able. We are expecting thousands of you to come. Our spaces are big, comfortable, uh, wide, but not for thousands of people. So no, there won't be access. And it would create the difficulty of having to supervise and uh, ensure security of our machines if we allow thousands of people in. So our locals will not be visitable during the next convention, but you will have plenty to do in there anyway. So that's not going to be a problem that you will notice. Will there be any exclusive... <coughs> Sorry, I'm starting to get tired. Will there be any exclusive content during the convention? I can't promise you anything. Otherwise, Eileen will start looking at me with a death It is a will that we have to bring you exclusive content in the Japan Expo and replicate that and new stuff for the Ankama convention. But I can't promise you there will be some new things to make you discover during the convention. Anyway, new content or not, there is already some stuff. The song designers, have they reworked? So all the animations have been reworked. All the ambience of maps and areas. And typically, it seems to me, after I've spoken about this in a previous live, the sound, because we are using... It's not, it's not really new technology. Just moving on the new uh, Unity engine allows us to use the F mode, which is a known plugin that lets us really utilize different um, music tunes for the same scenario so we don't stop ourselves from using it but yeah essentially we want you to have different intensity of music depending on the hp of the boss or things like that dynamic music will be something of the future these are things that did not necessarily exist or were doable up until now but the fact of moving on a new technology that allows us to do that will mean that we will have a lot of updates to bring you not only on the graphics change the content of the game but also the music and our emissions so our game our music designers are on the task there's about 3600 pieces of work that will be so most of our sounds are eight bits for those of you who know It's, it will be up to you to discover. We will do some crazy stuff. And do a lot of... Uh, a lot of real work with music. So the animations of the maps and stuff like that. There will be a lot of things that will be sonorized. They will have new music and sound effects added to them. And there will be originality added and stuff like that. There will be novelty in your ears for sure. And they have worked it fabulously. And you will enjoy it. No, that's true. We we are so looking forward for you to try the new beta. We're so looking forward to that. There will be solo fights at the Japan Expo. For an organizational um, question, this is much easier and simpler. Class balancing or class changes, at least review the Zello for 273. No, nothing. For the 273, we are trying to be minimalist on the update that we're proposing. We want to just, there will be a lot of things on the side, but just the true fair. We're focusing on that and making sure it's successful. And we want you to test the beta. We want you to tell us about, we don't want to give you too many things to do in the Flash version. So we want to focus on the um, Unity beta by then. The Monday Live is still on the plan. And we will talk to you about this. The fight that will happen in Japan Expo. For those of you who missed it. You'll be able to see it. So we'll talk about that. And help us imagine the succession. The new boss fights and things like that. So it will allow you to see new animations. New spells. Even though it wasn't on the classes that you know. Because the context is different. But yeah. 
you will be, you will see the new tools at play rather than see your class at play it's a side of unity that we've never showed you which is one of the most important ones fights animations music how everything works inside the next one yes. will we have access the japan expo fight will we be, will have access to a game nope there will only be an exclusive content that will be proposed at the Japan Expo and the and the convention towards August and September. New dungeons for existing mobs. In all transparency, we've talked about this. We're hoping that the Unity porting will allow us, after we've bloody released Unity and get it over with, it will allow us and free our time so that we can work on some dungeons that we started, like the Goblins, and we started working that, but we just didn't have enough time. The graphics, the animators, there was just so much. The game developers, just too much to do. Something I would like to do, like the Koalak area, some some spots that could be made more interesting by adding dungeons and things like that. Yeah, so we just need Unity out of the way to free up the time to go back to that kind of stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of it. Like the Porco area, we've talked about it as well. We want to introduce new content there. There's the, the Colosseum, ah, uh, the machines that push, the, <laughs> the robots that push and stuff like that. <laughs> I was making a joke about a, a cartoon that was called Push Push, Push Push. And the mechanic, it's not, it's not in the, I missed it. There are features that have passed that will not be reviewed now, which are breeding and gathering professions. We have not made any modifications right now, but it is in that big board I've told you about. We've spoken about it not very long ago. There's a lot of work. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done on this, but it's not. It's not in the plan for the short term. Yeah. It's a big topic that I'm so looking forward to get completely redo and work over. I'm so excited for it, but the list is infinite when it comes to the things that we want to bring. Yeah, gills as well. Yeah, the gills as well. Yeah, we're working on it. Maybe even shorter term than breeding the gills at least and the professions. Oh yeah, for, for sure, for sure, for sure. We're talking about gills. There will be much sooner revamp than uh, the other sides that we've mentioned earlier. Mounts and pets mounts, will they be reworked immediately after the porting? No. If it's from a game design point of view, no. If you're talking about graphics change, we wish to re, re retake the design of the Drago Turkey and just completely revamp it because we think it's getting a bit old. Otherwise, we haven't made any plans to make big modifications and stuff like that. So in the medium term, we want to bring we want to bring mounts, pets mounts, and all the other ones under one umbrella to simplify the artwork for the future and make it seamless and easy to modify them. Will Dofus come in real Unreal Engine for 2060? <laughs> yeah, we hope that we think it will survive until 2060. I saw a question. Will uh, the mobile version, will it come out immediately uh, during December with the Unity release? No, it's not something that will happen. It, we've been working on it on uh, the, not the mobile thing. We're working on it for the PC part. We want the fight stuff to be um, seamless for PC players. And then so that the APKs, the mobility, the fights, the mechanics and all the tools are functional already. And then port it later on. So it will not happen at the same time. There will be a delay. Are you going to rework some cinemat, the you know the cinematic phases of some quest fights? <coughs> no, but people who will test the Japan Expo will see that we have new possibilities of sceneries outside of the fights that we will we are looking to exploit and use outside of the fight to bring more life and immersion to your questing. If I'm not saying nonsense, the cinematics and the animated sceneries that have been done by the uh, Ankama team are working on big 
projects that are taking up all of their time. So we're working with this reality. We're working with little scenes in game. But here's the um, the advantage of moving to Unity will be the tools that will bring that it will bring to us, so that we can make new cinematics and stuff, like, have more flexibility and bring new stuff to the table. But it's not going in the right direction right now. I must admit, it's much better than before. But yeah. Just moving a character and stuff like that. The game is 20 years old. The game is 20 years old. We're not going from here to December. We will not go over the whole quest in the game to add sceneries. There's so much of it. We've not got a humanly possible amount of time to do that. We would really love to, but it won't be possible. We tried to critical. We we try to do those revamps on critical ones, and by that I mean the ones that everybody does, not the whole game, just the big quests and stuff that everybody sort of goes through at one point or another. He's asking about some sort of quest, some uh, shield or cosmetic. They said that we'll not be able to get, you will not be able to pick in the convention. For those of you who don't know the region, because some people don't come to the north. Roubaix is in the Lille Metropole, which is massive. So in terms of uh, receiving capacity, we're fine. There's a metro that does the entire Lille. There's two lines that do the entire metropolis. So you're fine for transportation. If you don't find this directly, just try and... He's naming area places where you can find hosting and places to live during this uh, period. So you don't need to confine your search to Roubaix if you want to stay. You can look a bit elsewhere. The transportation is fine. So, yeah. So there's plenty of areas around that are much bigger. The area itself is able to absorb a lot of people coming to it. But why is the convention free? Oh, there's a question I wasn't expecting. Let, let's go over the formula again and put a price on it. <laughs> the convention is the gift that we give the community. The idea to celebrate the 20 years is not to make people pay 15, 20 quid to come and celebrate with us. It's a gift that we're given. It's something that we do because it makes, it brings us joy and pleasure. We want it to bring you joy and pleasure. It's a festive time and we want it to be free. It's a time to celebrate our 20 years and that's all there is to it. The question about the dialogue thing with Unity that he mentioned during the podcast, where you can see where it's, uh, we don't know how long it's going to take to put it in place. Not, not only the time, but also the budget side of it. I don't know how many lines of dialogue in the game, but there's a massive amount of them. I don't know exactly how many, hundreds of thousands. At a minimum, there's at least a hundred thousands. Yeah, I, I, speaking of hundreds of thousands, I'm very far off the mark. There's so much. But to redouble all of them and add this new feature to them, it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to be costly. I'm not saying it's never going to happen, but I dream of a uh, time where the game is doubled, translated, I don't know. Some people are talking of IAO, I don't know what that means. If we talk of doublage as in translation, we want something of high, big quality. Ah, I think they're talking about a series. The series, the voiceover of the actual shows they make. It would be terrible to use IA. We have real big actors, real big voice actors and singers that produce these things for us. We don't, it's not in our DNA to just use the cheapest tool to replace those and just do it fast. No, the our objective is never to go through IA. If we ever get to do something like that, we've got so many NPCs and lines and things like that. Yeah, but which means we've got, we've got years of work in the industry just with our plans. It's a dream. It's a soft dream that I have, but it's not something that is realistic that I want to commit to at this point in time. So it's not on the uh, subject of voice. Oh, voices. They were talking about voices. So when you read it, you can press and then you hear the NPC dialogue. So when there are new um, 
a new server is released, we want that everyone starts from scratch and then it would be a new proper opening, reopening. Everyone starts on the same. An alliance update this year? No, nothing this year. There will be correctives that we have prioritized. There are some, um, some ideas that we have on the table right now. In essence, this year, what we're really, really trying to do is to get you started on a very solid foundation when Unity is released. We want the release to go well. And the Alliance is, is not the core gameplay, so we're not prioritizing it. It's for later. There are things that are in the plans. What we want to do on the big lines is to give interest to having a uh, captured territory. This is what we're working on right now, and this is what we want to better. And also, the destruction of prisms and the recovering of nuggets. But there won't be a full-on revamp of alliances. There are things that we are thinking about. We're thinking about the topic regularly, but it won't be for this particular year. The better will last six months. Bad mathematics. So, on the six months, you won't have one single we will do little imports of your characters progressively so we can debug existing problems so for example on the very first rushes that you will do on the better servers everything to do with breathing it's really difficult to put all the history and all the stuff the houses same thing all the gear that has been generated it's virtually impossible to in a few weeks what has happened in 15 years in the game, all that data ported to Unity. So you won't have three or four intensive um, continuous rush, but every now and then we will put a mirror, so to speak, of the production. So like a reset or something like that. Yeah, because it's 15 years of content. We want to bring it progressively rather than on a big burst. So yeah, so there will be some specific cases that will come back. What was the issue? The beta will also work to get your feedback, to get your uh, your opinions. There are any modifications that need to be done. Some, uh, there will be potential wipes of the beta okay, on occasion. To keep the progression of four months, there will be a moment where it will start anyway when the, the unity re resumes. So the objective is that when we release the new servers, it will be a an appreciated moment for players. And uh, we want everyone to be on the same page. Uh, we want it to go well for everyone involved. I am seeing a question about bots. Uh, the bots that are blocking the monitors up at the moment right now. We did a beautiful band wave one and a half weeks ago now. Something like that. And they're not happy and they're showing that they're not happy. So they're manifesting in the Zap to show that they're still here. Nah, 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 nah. So there were a few thousand accounts that were banned. And so they're not happy and they're protesting in the Vanta Zap. So we are regularly doing uh, passes and wave bans. So they're showing at which point to stay polite to show how much we've broken their legs. So yeah, there are bots that are making life hard at the moment. But there are wave bands that will continue happening and that shows that our previous solutions are starting to hurt them and you see this is the french way <laughs> even bot makers protest <laughs> will there be a change on breathing immediately will there be privatization of uh, paddocks it's not planned for now again it's one of the things that the topics that we want time to reflect before we put a solution in place. We can't just answer right now. We need to take time to think about these topics before reaching a solution and then communicate. When it, in terms of design, when you start to touch a part of a future, you have to see and foresee the consequences on the entire ecosystem. So you don't just look over a feature called breathing. It needs to be, the change that you bring has to be coherent. It has to make sense and not affect. So you, you overlook the entire pack if you want to change something. We don't want to change your habits massively and then six months later change your habits again massively. So we try to time these things very well. 
I've seen a question about maintenance. Why are you doing them every Tuesday? Will you stop doing them in Unity? Right now, the way we do it is to bring correctives in game. Namely, like the correctives happening in uh, next week on, for the 20 years. So these are things that are will be baked in the changelog. So there will also be transfers every week. The characters that move servers. So Unity, in theory, there will be transfers. As you, but as we've talked to you before with Papino in a previous, in a very difficult life where we had a lot of problems. We remember that. We made a lot of modifications and then you saw the results of that. But what we wanted is to bring you real-time transfers. It's something... Today is something that blocks us. It blocks us in this routine of one weekly maintenance. And essentially what you need to know, fundamentally, we have some technical things that will require maintenance. Just to talk about two, that server transfers and maintenance. We need to do those. And we need to do those. And we have to do them. So we choose to do them on Tuesday. So we choose to do them on that one day. We are talking with Rebek and the team to make sure that we can design the game moving forward so that they're not necessary. But we have seen in the Temporis Retro at 1 a.m. we've seen some problems. The Temporis works so well that technically a very little technical point I want to talk. Every item has a unique ID. It starts from one to whatever billion number. This limit is two billion and something. And then we reached it this night at 1 a.m. And no, ch no exchange or trade was able to happen. And this is something that we were able to reset on the update on maintenance on Tuesday, where we reset that counter to one. So you're able to play the game. So there are still some technical foundational things that are happening in the game that the UID is not long enough. So it has a limit, and when it reaches that limit, it poses a problem. So there are still some foundational underlying things that we can't, we haven't found a solution to fix without having to do a maintenance. So it has to stay for now. Things that we don't necessarily expect will happen. On the same vein, we have a situation or scenario every uh, Tuesday. You don't necessarily see it, but every Tuesday, there is what we call memory leaks. Every now and then, there's some. Uh, elements that are created by the server but they're not deleted properly so as time goes that deleted data everything starts bubbling up but on that tuesday we just reset the whole thing we delete everything so if we decide not to the to restart on tuesday there will be things that you don't see after two weeks let's say the data will be so big that you will feel the consequences. So if one day we can get rid of the transfers, the maintenances and everything like that, there will still be this problem to have to face because it's not evident to find a solution to these memory leaks. I have seen a question about emotes. Will all the emotes be usable immediately after the Unity release? Yes. Maybe not from day one, maybe not from the release. We're still calibrating this from the production side and there's a big ass number of them. There are some that will not necessarily be emo, so that will have different uses. There is some case by case. And there's also a big question about optimization. From time to time, we have made some really cool emos that are really, really cool. I'm thinking about the Croquette team with the uh, um, Zeppelin or whatever it's called, the balloon. This is just a detail, but the size of it, it's a little scene, it's a little movie from the client side. The developers are not happy with that, so we're trying to re-go over it. So sometimes I've worked in dirty manners and have done some things that we shouldn't have done. But with Unity, we have to go over all of them and make sure that we don't work with our previous bad habits and in-store new good ones moving forward. The advance of the better, will it be in december no the updates and upgrades that will happen to the beta will happen for during the beta so that when the release happens we have everything sorted so the better the interest of the beta is not for you to keep and conserve your progress no 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 no, no. there will be a lot of difference even in the game design and game development there will be a massive difference between the beta and the final product that will release in december question the new servers we haven't asked this question yet internally um if we can serve the same duration what do we do uh the first dungeons the first dungeon are level 50 the last one might be a bit difficult to do maybe there will be a longer motivation i don't know what he's talking about here when are you guys taking holiday holy shit that's a good question <laughs> what are you going on 
transparent full transparency we have make sure to do them in alternates to make sure that every department or every service every team has functional number of people to make sure that we continue the, the work during the better it's not a time that we want people to be off a lot so we want people to be focused so holidays in this year will be a bit particular and different because we're putting the emphasis on the project and we're trying to make sure that you go on holiday when you want but not this year it's going to be a bit different When are expeditions come, come in? We haven't yet thought about the uh, three. If the question has been asked, that means that the expeditions two was a massive hit. The last one was uh, two years ago, a, a year and a half, two years. But I don't know if you will have to wait as long as, but I cannot say anything about it right now. Could we have a reference to the Olympics game in the game? No. There is the Cross Olympics. This year was a B60, so um, what do you call leap year? We had the 20, 29th February. February, So we had the uh, and the birth of Hugo and a leap year. So we did stuff back there. Yeah, it's it's light and pointy in terms of law, but they were there. So we've ticked that off. So there won't be anything more than that. The shadow event will it come back um no it's not something that <coughs> we can say about right now it's something that we've enjoyed it's not something that we want to bring yearly maybe some of its mechanics that we will see again in a temporis or something like that but i'm not saying this with uh something in mind i'm just saying maybe just opening the door we did the live with uh, the guys and we've talked about this before are you not worried about destroying the current server with the release of the new ones my side it's a big topic from my side no you will not when you start a new server it will have any impact on existing teams or characters even though they are 20 years so we have players that play dragon heroes but continue to play in top cash or whatever in uh, their multi-team which is logical so we don't want them to lose the progress and investment that they have uh for 20 years even if just the cosmetics the, the work that you've accumulated the stuff that you've accumulated over the last two decades some of the stuff that we've showed you on the website today but what about my cosmetics ultra rare ones will i be able to give it to all my team and stuff like that it's these little points that makes dofus really special and no i don't think that the new servers will completely remove population from the previous one so like i say if you played 20 years in a server and you have a team you're not just going to abandon that overnight will the uh final hits at the end of the fight will they stay no the current use in the game it's deactivate that's the only thing that you do you deactivate them or we kick you from the group it's a bit toxic it's not something that we want so we've recycled them into emotes so you can release them directly from that little panel that you have at the bottom <coughs> ah sorry oh no 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 because it made everyone lag but it was also unagreeable to wait for eight seconds for something to happen that you haven't asked for so it's something that was completely abandoned. Everybody just untakes them. But, oh, ah. yeah, the mechanic did not work as intended. So we have we will have to review it. But the modifications of uh, markets, maybe I am getting ahead of myself, but work for doing a big modification on their markets. I've seen the question float on the uh, buy offer. It's coming in their next patch anyway, but... Pedophis, we are a company where games have certain similarities and we will see in Wackful if it works really well and it's superb, then we're not against that. Yeah, we could bring it. Yeah, yeah, we could bring it to Dofus, but we are keeping an eye on how it works with Wackful. Big game design question. Separation of PvP and PvM. I've just asked this question earlier. Oh! 
Oh, she's hesitant. Oh. What? Thank you for that one. <laughs> no, it's not in the works. No. Uh, it's not because it would make us double the spell kit. Not necessarily just the spell. Because when you start balancing spells for PvP and PvM, we will start asking us to balance items for PvP and PvM because you have items that can release spells like Rockabir. And it just opens up a Pandora box of headache that we're not ready for. And it's not by separating them that we will have less problems in balancing. You don't you will start saying that you don't balance PvP as much as PvM. we feel we feel forgotten, forsaken. These are a, this is a good example of good bad ideas. They sound good, but when you bring them to reality, they bring a pharaonic, a massive amount of work, and still end up with the same result. Disappointed everyone. <laughs> yeah. I, I missed. Oh, when the, she, the question is the limitation at eight. The limitation of 8 characters maximum in a fight, when you play multi-account, it's 8 account and everything is good and we're occupied in the fight, but really, when you are in monocode, you really quickly get bored when you have to wait for 7 others to finish their game, their turn. So essentially from a game design point of view, there's a limitation because there's a time limitation and the group size limitation because we don't want fights to be very long. And there's also technical limitations, which mean that server side to have a fight eight versus eight on either side it's a bit heavy on terms of data nonetheless if one day we could find different game mode that could simulate more than eight without being more than eight we couldn't we wouldn't be against but for now and if we could link this to gills it would be oh my god it would be incredible that's end of game stats Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's his answer. Yes. <laughs> You'll be able to see the next. Oh, that's definitely something I want to see. The interface of the end game, the new stats that will be added to it, you'll be able to see at the Japan Expo. I will have to ask uh, Istos to. Hold on, let me put this. Uh, the just has done it, but it's also. Something where we see a mobile, the difference between a mobile game and a different. We're going in the axis of the moment, it's their game, it's normal. These are changes that make the progression easier, that reduce. They only have four, they don't have eight. So changes like these are to speed up progression in the game. To make sessions in the game are usually lower smaller so we want to do things faster so they accommodate for that but for those who in pc no 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 we don't have anything like that because sessions in pc are longer we have an interest as well in going to uh ah going to cities causes destruction of commas opening uh your uh market and stuff like that so these things like that mean minor in the but at the level of the server, these are necessary. We don't want to do modifications to remove markets and zaps and things like that. They're meaningful. But for agility, tackle, chance, prospection. It's in the board. Ay, 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 ay. Agility might change. It will not likely no longer to be luck. I'm thinking at the same time as I talk. I'm thinking we should just show you the board. Just so you know what our priority is and what we're doing. What's the difference between uh, there is something to do between uh, a, a lot of work to do at the level of primary and secondary stats uh, items. Some items will lose some of their values, some uh, elemental pathways. So we're really thinking about this before making any change. Unity existed. All characters of existing servers will be ported to Unity. They will still exist as they are. But new ones, no. Bonta Brack something? No. Oh, the tracking system. No, never coming back. It would be terrible to bring it back. It was good for its time. But there were so many abuses back in the day, even. <laughs> My strength secretary does not know what you're talking about. 
<laughs> a heroic server return no shadow will not will still be uh, available in the unity ported ported battle the shield update we talked about it for this 272 update and it's still in the work for the end of the year with you to come with unity not 273 battle not the visual it's game design rework, not just a visual one. It's a limitation that we have with the big timing, every sort of update that we want to do. We have the Unity beta. We don't want to do any classical sub beta to not remove your attention from one. So we don't authorize and allow ourselves to do any uh, changes, balances. So I, we're pushing all of that stuff to December to coincide with the portal once we have that out of the way. Then we can work on stuff. What does it mean, the uh, shield revamp? So there's a lot of power creep to do with the range and long distance damage. There's a lot of power creep. But what we want to do is review. We want to make objects a lot more classic by reviewing them. While reducing the specificity of melee and distance damage because there's a lot of power creep and we can feel it we can see it in the game and it comes sense don't touch my four leaf somebody said in the chat <laughs> now for unity we've talked about this we don't want to bring immediately uh we want to but we're not going to do it immediately the day night rain uh, season however however for example at the Japan Expo, the fight, there will be a new functionality within the fight, inside the fight. During the fight, the environment will change. The animation will change. The scene, the music, a lot of things will evolve about the fight itself. We've tested this. It's beautiful. It's remarkable. It's really cool. Our objective will be to add it to all the new dungeons that will come in. Maybe not all of them, but add scenery and interaction animation. It will be more stylish, but it will be more localized to dungeons don't hesitate to come to the japan expo to see it. there will be a fight where, where you see lightning strikes and stuff and wind and explosions and stuff <laughs> now as i was saying earlier when we're talking about tools it's typically this now we can do so much more with the evolution of the map the themes the vfx stuff that comes in and goes out the audio it pleases us so much i've seen a basic question what is power power creep that you mentioned when it's when you become too powerful when we add new games that give too much power in one hit means you hit a lot harder so it's a phenomenon that you see in mmos when you keep adding when you keep adding content you get limited by stats so the most easy from game development side is to make sure that new set the new sets, while being at the same level, have more stats, which generates power creep. So for the same content, level 200, some bosses will have resistances and HP. It's completely different to others. Some will be easy, and some will be completely broken. Think, uh, think Eternal Conflict versus uh, Nileza. I'm not going to spit on other games, but Genshin Impact, for example, their system works. On the basis that their system works on buying new heroes which means uh, you buy there's a power creep which means you buy to buy a stronger one so old ones are weaker and so this is something that we've discussed when free ghost came out most of the sets that already existed that were other place it was a massive power creep to the already existed one, the fry ghost ones and also you had to do the dungeon to equip them so it brought three elements which did not exist on any set before. And then there was a new game that we've played around resistances, which is another type of power creep. Then we've added the shields, which added percentage damage or melee, which massive power creep. So the fact of adding stuff like that on top of each other, values, game development, some things just completely lose meaning. So yeah, essentially the advent of shields that their stats have created a big gap in terms of power creep and we just completely ignore that for now we see what that has resulted in but we'll have to look over it at some point
So the question of transfers, and there's a question that I can answer maybe in general terms. The new Unity servers, we haven't uh, prepared. No, there won't be any transfer from mono to multi servers. No. The economies will be so different. We'll have different, different, completely different servers. And similarly, uh, how can I say? The new servers, that's why Hagrid stayed that long. Because the new economies will be completely different, so we want to preserve that separation. I'll take a case. So in December, if there's a new server mono account, it is not it is not in the plans to fuse it with the current mono account because they will have completely different economies. And in game experience as well, it will be completely different. And if 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 farmed and be the only one to have high level resources and then fuse with another server who has thousands of them, no no. Without yeah. And also to avoid the effect of previous idle effects on the new server. One last little question each. Because we have a meeting to talk about the Unity beta. Which I really want to go on attend. So one last question each. And then we can uh, leave uh, leave each other to after this. I'm going to answer this question. Sorry for those who have asked it. I've seen it pass from a while. But I've not asked it. Is it? Is are you planning to have a piano at the convention? I don't know why people are asking, but to my knowledge, there won't be a piano at the convention. I don't know why people are asking. I've seen a question about the new class. No, there won't be any new class, there is none planned. Similarly, every question we try not to say never, but me 19 on the interface just bothers me at least a 20th aesthetically pleasing but we won't add a new class just to say look we've added a new class there is no interest nothing new to add it's just to round up the number it's not a priority it's not something we want to do it's not something that we're going to do in the next month or six months but it's still something that we are thinking about and there will possibly be potentially be the summary of this live will be hell because we've taken so many questions and sadly we've touched every question, every topic. They're all important. Sadly, sadly team, back to work. We had to. One last question for Eileen. Group search. Oh, come on. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, it's not too bad. This is also something that we are focused on. Nonetheless, there is something that is not similar to the other games. Uh, I think in whatever the name of that game was, I will. What changes is we don't have very specific and precise archetypes. Every class is capable of assuring multiple roles. This is why it's really difficult to make automatic matchmaking. But right now, we don't know exactly how to do it and make it happen. But right now, we are working on a functionality that will allow you to search for groups. Little announces, little ads. We've talked about that at a certain time. It's something that will allow you to find people to join you on your activity, but not necessarily a specific class or whatever. But as Eileen has said, there's a big initial difficulty that we live with Coliseum is to how do you form groups? What are the pillar classes for every dungeon? Do you push pandas all the time? If there is a panda, how do you know it's viable or not for a certain dungeon or this or that? Every single, the, the more constraints there are, the more, the least effective it will be. So we have to think. So for now, we're really just thinking about an ad system that is a tool at your disposal that you use to find like a real group search. Something that profound with um, sort of algorithmic matchmaking is not going to come soon. And there was a joke. Yeah, there was a joke in the chat that she's validated. One last thing before we conclude. I wanted... I've gone back over the parallel conversation. In theory, all the... Ah, they're going back to the start of the live. So right now, all the servers are fine. The creation of accounts is fine. Don't hesitate to go and log in right now. If you have any feedback, let us know. And for the conversation, we will talk to you about them in a short while. Yes. We will think about this all night. I've already, I've already had a, I've already stayed up all night because of retro problem. Maybe you take this one, Rebecca. <laughs> uh.
Right. I think I think this is it. This is this is it. Thank you all. Finally, we've talked about the 20 year, but not just that. The summary of the life will be the 20 year one. But thanks for answering all these questions. Thanks for posing them. There was a lot more content we wanted to go over, but we don't, yeah, we'll come back in September on it and we'll talk about it during the Japan Expo. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll talk about this in the next live. We won't hold you back for too long, but yeah, essentially we will come back to it. Yep. That's it for us. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Bye.